Hi friends, it's me, Maura Esther, and today we are going to talk about all the amazing, fun things that we do on a very special holiday. Things like cleaning up our house, making sure there's no bread in sight. Things like eating from a Seder plate, or drinking four cups of grape juice. Can you guess what it is? That's right, it's the holiday of Pesach. I am so excited to talk to you about the very special holiday of Pesach. Now before we begin, I would like to say hello to a few of my friends. First, I want to say hello to Lily and Sarah Shapiro from Los Angeles, California. Hi. Ephraim and Johanna Kamaika from Scottsdale, Arizona. Hi, Musia and Hannah Kulik, Chicago, Illinois. Hi. Yuda and Mendel Fogelman from Los Angeles, California. Say hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. Oh wow, it makes me so happy to see my friends from all over the world saying hello to you. Okay friends, let's begin with the story of Pesach. Why do we do all these amazing fun things on Pesach? It's all from the story. Once we know the story of Pesach, we will have a better understanding of why we do all the special things on so, let's start. This is my book, my story about Pesach. I'm going to open it up and show you what the story of Pesach is. A long time ago, the Jewish people were living in the land of Mitzrayim in Egypt. And they loved Mitzrayim so much. They would relax and have fun. There was a lot of food there and so many fun things for them to do. And they were really enjoying themselves. But one day, King Paro saw that the Jewish people were getting bigger and bigger. And there were so many of them. And King Paro was getting a little bit nervous. Uh-oh, he said, hmm, I think that I need to make sure the Jewish people don't take over my land. So what did King Paro do? One day, he walked up to the Jewish people and said, okay, everyone. I'm going to start building a little tower here. The Jewish people saw King Paro trying to build a tower and they said, Hey, King Paro, you don't have to build it by yourself. We can help you. And they started to help him build. And the Jewish people said, Hey, King Paro, you're, you're such a great king. We don't want you to have to work so hard. We will help you. So they started taking their hammers and nails and started helping King Paro. And Slowly but surely, King Paro made sure that the Yidden were working even harder and harder. And one day he said, I'm not going to pay you anymore. You have to work for free and be my slaves. Uh oh, the Jewish people were getting very worried and nervous. They did not like that at all. They were working so hard. And King Paro's soldiers would make sure that the Jewish people did not have any breaks. Can you imagine working so hard and not getting any break? That's what it was like for the Jewish people. So let's sing a song about how hard the Jewish people were working so we could try to imagine how hard it was for them. Are you ready? Bang, 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 hold your hammer low. Bang, 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 give a steady blow. For it's work, work, work every day and every night. Dig, 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 dig 
your shovel deep. Dig, dig, dig. There's no time to sleep. For it's work, work, work every day and every night. For it's work, work, work when it's dark and when it's light. One day King Power said, I want to make sure that no Jewish boys can grow up in the land of Egypt. Make sure nobody takes over the land. So King Paro made a decree that all the Jewish boys would get thrown into the Nile River. <gasps> That's so scary. There was a lady, her name was Yochaved, a Jewish mommy. And she had a baby boy named Misha. And she saw that Misha was very special. And she said, I don't want my Misha to get hurt or, or, or get thrown into the Nile River. I'm going to put him into a basket. And so his sister Miriam would watch baby Misha in the river and make sure that he was safe. And she saw King Paro's daughter, Batya, looking in the river. All of a sudden she saw baby Misha in the river. And she stretched out her hand. <gasps> And she saw baby Misha there and she took him with her stretched arm. And she brought baby Misha into the palace. Now Misha grew older and bigger and he used to see the Jewish people were working so hard and it made him so sad to see all the Jewish people working. And one day he said, I don't want to see this anymore. And he saw the two Egyptian soldiers being not so nice to the Jewish people and he hurt them. And then he said, uh-oh, I might get in trouble. So he ran away, and he ran, 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 ran away from Mitzrayim. And he was not in King Power's palace anymore. And you know what he did? He became a shepherd to watch all the sheep. He didn't want to be in Mitzrayim any longer. One day, one of his sheep running away from the, from the rest of them. And Misha loved being a shepherd. He wanted to take care of all the sheep. So he ran after the sheep that, that was missing and he said, Shepsla, where are you? Where are you? <gasps> where did he find the missing sheep? Near a burning thorn bush. <gasps> this burning thorn bush was not was just on fire. But the leaves were not burning. It was a big miracle and Moshe knew it was very special. This is where Hashem was going to talk to Moshe and say, Moshe, it's time for you to go back to Mitzrayim and take the Jewish people out of Mitzrayim so that they don't have to be slaves anymore. Moshe was a little bit nervous, but Hashem said, you can do it, Moshe. So, Misha went back to Mitzrayim and he said, King Paro, let my people go. And you know what King Paro said? No, no, no. I will not let them go. Oh, listen, oh, listen, oh, listen, King Paro. Oh, listen, oh, listen, please let my people go. They want to go away. They work so hard all day. King Paro, King Paro, what do you say? No, 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 I will not let them go. No, 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 I will not let them go. That's right, King Paro said. No, no, no. I will not let them go. This is my King Paro hat. And King Paro was not nice at all. Maisha Rabbeinu said, King Paro, please let my people go. And King Paro said, no, no, no. I will not let them go. That's not nice, King Paro. You're not very nice. Hashem decided the first Maka would be Maka's done the whole water and oceans in the land of Mitzrayim turned into blood. The Jewish people would try to sell their water for money and the Mitzrayim would buy it from them because they had no other choice. Everything of water turned into blood. 
the next maca was maca seeds, our dea. This was where all the frogs would come to the land of Mitzrayim, and the Mitzrayim would try to get rid of them and whack them away, but there was just more and more frogs everywhere. One morning when Paro woke in his bed, there were frogs in his bed and frogs on his head, frogs on his nose and frogs on his toes. Frogs here, frogs there, frogs were jumping everywhere. Uh oh. One morning when Paro awoke in his bed, there were frogs in his bed and frogs on his head, frogs on his nose and frogs on his toes. Frogs here, frogs there, frogs were jumping everywhere. Frogs here. That's so silly. King Paro had frogs everywhere. Then came Kinim, which was lice all over their bodies. After that came Arov, which was wild animals roaming the land of Mitzrayim. Then came Makas Dever, which was all the cattle dying. It was so sad. After that came the Makas Shrin, boils all over their bodies. Then came Barad, which was hail and ice falling from the sky. Shortly after came Makas Arbe, which was locusts flying around. Then it was Makas Cheshach. The whole Mitzrayim became dark. No one could see anything. Finally, the last Maka was Makas Becharais, which was the firstborn son dying. He finally said, please, please let the Jewish people go and make my nation feel better already. Dum Tzvardeya Kinim Arov Dever Shchen Barad Arbe Chai Shech Makas Becharais And the Yidin finally left Mitzrayim. The Yidin collected all the jewelry, gold, and things from all over the land of Mitzrayim. And they left Mitzrayim. Hooray! Wow, what fun! That is so great! As the Yidin left, they came across a big body of water. They were nervous and they didn't know what to do. They saw the Mitzrayim chasing after them. But Hashem made a big miracle and split the Yamsuf in half. The Yidin were so happy to be walking through the Yamsuf. Behind them, they could see the Mitzrayim falling in the ocean as the Yamsuf went back to its natural form. Even though King Paro tried to chase the Yidin, he fell into the ocean. He got washed away with the sea. Bye bye, King Paro. And the Yidin were saved and they made it out of Mitzrayim. Hooray! <laughs> okay, friends, now that we spoke about the whole story of Pesach, let's talk about the different things that we do on Pesach. The first thing that we do before Pesach even starts is clean our house for Pesach. Would you like to clean with me? Okay, let's go. Here we are in Mora Esther's kitchen. This is so exciting. So, what we have to do for Pesach is clean all the chametz out of our kitchen. Are you ready to do that with me? Hmm, do you see anything chametz in my kitchen? Let's look around. That's right, these pretzels. Are pretzels kosher for Pesach? No, no, no. We have to get rid of them before Pesach starts. We're going to put all the things that are coming, not kosher for Pesach, in this box. Let's see, what else do I have? Hmm. That's right. These breadsticks. Are breadsticks kosher for Pesach? No, no, no. They are not. Let's put them in our chametz box. Here we have tea biscuits. Those are pretty yummy, but they're not kosher for Pesach. Bye bye tea biscuits, see you after Pesach. Putting them in my chametz box. Oh my goodness, what do we have here? Mmm, challah rolls. Are challah rolls kosher for Pesach? No, 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 they are not. I'm going to put them in my chametz box. There's a few more. Let's count, how many challah rolls should I put in my chametz box? 
One, two, three, four. Four collarals in my felt box. And what else do I have? Mm, this is a container of oatmeal. Are we allowed to have oatmeal on Pesach? No, 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 we cannot. So the oatmeal is going to go into my chametz box. Okay, chametz, I'll see you later. I cannot eat any of you on Pisa. Bye-bye. Okay, now that we got rid of all the chametz in my kitchen, I need to clean up, make sure there's no more crumbs. So I'm going to get my cleaning supplies. Okay, here is my apron. I'm going to put it on. Here it is, tied in the back. I'm going to put my cleaning apron on. And now I'm going to put my cleaning gloves on. Ready? I have two gloves for two hands. One, one glove here, and another glove right here. I'm ready to clean. And I have my cleaning spray and my towel. Okay, let's start. Ready? And I like to sing my cleanup song while I clean. All right. Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up, everybody do your share. Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up, everybody do your share. Hey, I think I missed a spot. <laughs> I got it. Okay, friends, that was so fun cleaning my kitchen for Pesach with you. And now that our kitchen is all clean for Pesach, it's time to bring out the matzah. Ready? I'm going to go get it. Here it is. Here's my matzah. And now I can put my clean, ready to eat kosher Pesach matzah on my kitchen counter. Hooray! Phew, that was a lot of cleaning. Good work, friends. You did a great job. And you can help your mommies and daddies clean at home. You say, mommy, daddy, do you need my help? And they might say, sure, here's a sponge. Here's some paper towels. Let's clean away. Wow, that was such great work cleaning more Esther's kitchen. You guys did a great job helping me out. Thank you. Now that we cleaned our house, we can now do the Dika's Chavez. Can you say the Dika's Chavez? Very good. Well, the Dika's Chavez is a very special thing we do the night before Pesach. We have three items we use. A wooden spoon, a candle, and a feather. That's right. We use these three items to collect 10 pieces of chametz. Here is my 10 pieces of chametz. Let's count together. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Wow! We are going to take this chametz and hide it around our house. And then we are going to do Bidika's chametz. We're going to search for the chametz and collect it all so that there's no more chametz in our home. Do you know why we clean the house for Pesach? Why do we have beer chametz, the burning of chametz? and bedikas chametz, when we search the house for chametz. Because in the story of Pesach, the Jewish people were running, running out of Mitzrayim and there was no time to waste. They had to get out of there real fast. And they put bread in the oven and they did not have any time to let the bread, the dough rise. It stayed flat in the oven. They took it out and it didn't rise in the oven. It was super duper flat looked like matzah. Do you want to see some real matzah? Here is my box of matzah. Let's look inside. Ready? 
shapes that matzah might come in. Now this matzah is a circle shaped matzah and it's really delicious. Yummy! That's what the matzah looked like when the Jewish people were running out of the Mitzrayim. On Pesach, we are only allowed to eat flour that's in the form of matzah. Are we allowed to eat bread and cookies and cake that flour is in? No, no, no. Let's see. I have different pictures here. We have bread that's cut into slices for sandwiches. Are we allowed to eat bread on pizza? No. Are we allowed to eat buns? No. Are we allowed to eat baguettes? They look really good, but no, not on pizza. And here we have pita bread, mm, like falafel, hummus, mm, yum. But no, we can't have that on Pesach. On Pesach, we're allowed to eat matzah and things that are kosher for Pesach, like fruits and vegetables and any item in the store that says KP, which means kosher for Pesach. And the next morning, heir of Pesach, the day of Pesach, we are going to take all that chametz and put it in a pile on the floor with our mommy or daddy's help and we're going to burn that chametz. And that is called bi'or chametz. Burning the chametz so that we don't have any more chametz in our house. Wow, great work friends. Now let's go find the chametz. Let's go. Now that I have my 10 pieces of chametz, I'm going to hide them all around the room. Are you ready? Okay friends, Mora Esther hid the 10 pieces of chametz all around the room. Now it's time to do Bindika's chametz. We must search for all 10 pieces. Are you ready? Let's go. Do you see a piece of chametz anywhere? Hmm. <gasps> That's right, you found it. Let's scoop it up, ready? Seder nights are filled with all fun things that we do. One of the things that we have at the Seder table is a Seder plate. This is my Seder plate puzzle. Would you like to do it with me? Let's see. There are different items on the Seder plate. We have beitza, which is an egg. We have karpas, which is a vegetable. Chazeres, which is lettuce. Chareses, which is apples and nuts mixed together with wine, mm, yummy. A zroya, which is a shank bone, a zroya. And mar, which is a very bitter, bitter vegetable. Why do we eat mar on Pesach? Because we want to remember the bitter, bitter times that the Jewish people had in Mitzrayim. Let's make this puzzle together. Ready? Take out the pieces and we are going to try to make a match. All ready. Here we go. The first piece we have is chareses. It's apples and nuts mixed together. Can you find the match? That's right, friends, you did it. You found the match. It goes here. Very good. 
The next piece of our puzzle is carpas. Now, carpas is a leafy vegetable. Can you find a match for the carpas? That's right, very good. Goes right there. Here we have a zoroa. A zoroa is a shade bone. Can you find a match for the zoroa? That's right, friend. Very good. It goes right there. Okay, next up is the pizza. The pizza is the egg. Can you find the match for the egg? Very good. Here is the maro. The maro is the bitter vegetable. Can you find a match? Great work, friends. And the last piece is the chazeret which is the lettuce. Can you find a match for the lettuce? Hmm, where does it go? That's right, you did it. You made a match for the Seder plate puzzle. Great work, friends. Okay, friends, we spoke about the Seder plate that's on the table, and now I have something else to show you. On the Seder table, we have four cups. Let's see, where are my four cups of wine? Or grape juice. One, two, three, and my last one is four. There it is, my four cups of wine. And we drink them throughout this. Yum! Here is another Seder plate that I have. Do you remember the items on the Seder plate? What's the bitter, bitter herb called? Starts with a mmm. That's right, mar. Very good. And the egg in Hebrew is called beitza. Over here we have karpas. It could be any vegetable, onion, or parsley, or potato. Dip it in salt water. Why do we dip it in salt water? To remember the salt, the tears that the Jewish people cried when they worked so hard. Over here we have chazeres, which is lettuce. Chareses, which is the apples, wine, and the nuts mixed up together. And the zraya, which is the shake bone. That's my cereal plate. Okay friends, one of the very special things that we do at the Seder table is ask the four questions. The Ma Nishtana. Can you say Ma Nishtana? Very good. Let's sing the Ma Nishtana together. Ma Nishtana Halayla Hazeh Mikol Halaylais What makes tonight very different from all other nights. So that is the question. What makes tonight different from all other nights? There are four questions. Let's go through them together. Shabachal halalais in anu matbilin afilu pa'am echas. On all other nights, we don't even dip our vegetables once. Halayla hazeh, halayla hazeh, shtei pe'amim. But on tonight, we dip twice. Shebechal halaylais, anu echlin chametz umatza. Chametz umatza. On all other nights, we eat chametz and matza. Delicious. Mm-hmm. Yummy. Halayla haze, halayla haze, kulo matza. And on tonight, on the Seder night, we only eat matza. Shebechal halaylais, anu achlin she'ar yirakot. We eat so many different kinds of vegetables on all other nights. Broccoli, corn, different types of vegetables. Halayla hazeh, halayla hazeh, maror. Tonight, only maror. 
Shabachal halalais anu eichlin ben yosh ben u ben misu ben. On all other nights, we sit straight and we lean. Halayla hazeh, halayla hazeh, kulanu misu bin. That's right, but tonight we only lean. And the answer to these questions is because on this night we want to remember the old days when the Jewish people were slaves. And today we're free. We dip our karpas in the salt water to remember the bitter tears. And we lean to remember that now we're like kings. We're free, right? To do what we want. And we don't have chametz because we want to remember how the Yidim had to run away from Mitzrayim and they did not have enough time to make the challah dough rise. So they had to eat only matzah. We only eat mar also because mar is also very bitter. And we want to remember the bitter times that the Jewish people had in Mitzrayim. And now we're free. Very good, friends. Wow, friends, that was so much fun learning all about Pesach with you. I had a great time today, and I hope you can join me again for another video with more Esther. And don't forget to subscribe below so that more Esther can make more videos for you to watch. If you would like to be in more Esther's next video, don't forget to send me an email right here. Okay, friends, have a great day at Kosher and Freilichen. Pesach. Bye-bye. Thank you to our generous sponsors who made this video possible.